Welcome to WatchNet TV and another edition of What's in the Box. This is kind of a different thing for me. I'm, I'm doing this at the request of a friend of mine from the Rolex forums who asked me recently, um, quote, in your opinion of all of the sport tool watches you've reviewed, what is the best one under 2K? Vintage or modern needs to be automatic. And I knew basically a couple of months ago what the answer to that question was, but I didn't have one to review, nor had I never done a review of one. So luckily enough, uh, recently I stumbled across a friend just by happenstance who happened to own one of these things, and it gave me the opportunity to finally answer the question and kind of do a fun review for you on a watch you definitely will not see every day. Um, some of you may actually be familiar with these things. This is an RXW watch. Um, RXW was a company started in the, about 1998 by a very noted Japanese collector named Ken Sato uh, of Ken Trading. And his earlier watches were homage watches to Panerai and Rolex. Um, and really by 2004 had gotten fairly popular. Um, unfortunately at the same time Panerai started really putting some heat on him to cease and desist from his homage operations and he eventually succumbed kind of losing the battle big time against the Vendome group. But enough of that for the moment so let's see what's in the box. You'll note an odd vague resemblance to a Rolex box set as I take this apart. There's certainly nothing unusual about that. Ken was a big vintage, probably still is a big vintage Rolex collector. Um, and in the early 2000s produced uh, kind of a knockoff for a, a homage version to the Yachtmaster and Explorer II, which is certainly popular. This one is my favorite of the group. Um, this one is actually uh, kind of a homage to the early prototypes of the deep sea and it's really a fascinating watch uh, for a number of purposes and let me see if I can kind of explain my logic to you. Um, this particular model is the Subpro Marine Revolution which was one of the last of the watches he produced in 2004. Uh, it it uses a really nice design that is similar in some respects with the long or elongated lugs to the Rolex deep sea prototypes that were stuck on the Trieste and taken down thousands of feet into the ocean. Uh, really more as publicity things for Rolex. But it's a beautifully designed case. I mean the, the, the elongated crowns, the interesting design of the uh, crown guard and the offset of the crown guard to the four o'clock position um, really give it a nice overall look. Um, the case is all high quality 316 steel um, with beautiful rounded edges. I don't know if you can kind of see from how I can get this into the camera but there's not a particularly sharp edge on the whole case. It's gorgeously finished. Uh, these watches were all Swiss made. Um, Ken had them put together by a company that obviously knew how to machine and do good work. The uh, movement is kind of a, a basic uh, ETA 2824 which is a, obviously a great workhorse watch movement. The um, Rock X, or Rocks if you prefer, um, is a name Ken invented to kind of stand for quote more solid than rock. The uh, watch originally sold in 2004 when it was released for 59,800 yen or so which is about 620 bucks US so it's definitely in my under $2,000 uh, category price range. The uh, Bracelet is a nice oyster style bracelet, solid links, good solid in links. Clasp style is a typical folded metal flip lock uh, akin to Rolex and a zillion other manufacturers. Uh, very well made, uh, definitely got some strength and heft to it. It's not just a flimsy piece of stamped steel. 
decent diver's extension, not the greatest one I've ever seen, but good quality nonetheless. Um, see if I can get around here, you can see some excellent machining work done on the end pieces. Um, nice finishing work done throughout the whole watch. Um, when these were built, Ken used a, um, a plasticized uh, movement holder for anti-shock resistance, kind of similar to what the Vermont people are doing today. And also used a soft iron core, which gives the watch a, a rating of about a thousand Gauss. Um, so it's kind of a, you know it's kind of an interesting cross between a Explorer and a Sub Mariner, with a nicely laid out military style dial, and uh, a good quality 60 click bezel. Um, you can see from the packaging that again there are some imitations to the Rolex C-clamp box series of the, of the period. Um, they included a nice good quality uh, well honed screwdriver which is nice of them to do. Um, it's unusual to find a nice hollow ground screwdriver in anything maybe outside of the Panerai world but it's a nice way to save the bolts uh, on the sizing lengths when you take them in or out. Now there's no substitute for a good hollow ground screwdriver. But most importantly, oops, sorry about that, I'll be back. Modern day circuit breakers are a real pain in the rear. I think sometimes if you sneeze on them they go off. I'm not exactly sure what that does for safety but it sure makes doing things like this kind of a pain. But back to where I was <coughs> interrupted a moment ago. The most interesting thing about this whole package is all of these rocks watches were sold by the Blue Collection in Japan. And very seldom do you ever see one of these with a numbered sales card that accompanies it. Um, I can't read any Japanese so I won't be any help translating. But um, given that there were only probably 200 some odd of these made to find one in his complete package um, is really rare in and of itself. Um, you know the interesting thing about these watches is you'll see them come up on places like eBay and things from time to time but most of those are actually fakes. Uh, turns out that around 2005 when Ken's work was becoming popular. Uh, a number of China and Hong Kong reproduction factories picked up on that popularity and, and began producing their own kind of standard fare of rep watches. Most of them emblazoned with, a, with real Rolex markings, you know, real, uh, real trademark, real Rolex name, Oyster, other things things that Ken never ever used when he manufactured these watches. And it's a shame that he was put out of business by larger corporations that took what was essentially a, a yes definitely a homage but some nicely made watches that were very very well priced for the money um, and rendered them all no longer producible. So anyway um, the, any of the RXWs are getting increasingly hard to find and becoming more and more collectible and now sell for easily as much as two times their initial retail value. So I realize my answer to this question is subjective. Uh, I couldn't possibly answer a question like which is the best one under two, which is the best dive or tool watch under $2,000. It's all personal opinion and what you like. But this is my answer to the question and I hope you like the review. It's a, at least it's a chance for you to see something that you'll never get an opportunity to see much in real, real time in your lifetime. Thanks for watching.